everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Firstly, this video is late and as you can see, I am in a completely different place. That is because we have just moved house. Sometimes real life gets in the way of music making, but that's just part of life. But yeah, all is well and now we're here in our new place. It's in the very center of Amsterdam, so if it's a bit noisy, <clears throat> yeah, I can hear a truck outside right now. Uh, so a lot of you have been writing to me with different questions about recorder playing. That is brilliant, keep them coming. And a few of you have asked how to get a good sound on a soprano recorder. And today I'm gonna give you my tips tricks and some exercises for not only how to get a good sound but also how to sound good. So we're all clear this is the soprano or desk camp recorder. The poor thing has managed to get a bit of a bad name for itself by being the instrument that most people start off on at a young age but it is a great instrument. I use my sopranos a lot. This is my Baroque model and this is my Ganassi model made by Yamaha and Bletzinger and they are both in my music bag all the time. And of course, in this video, I cannot hope to cover everything about sound and tuning and breathing. These are just some ideas and tips to start you off. If you have tips or things that work for you, please leave it in the comments below because I'm always here, curious to hear about it as well. <laughs> and a lot of the information I'll be using in today's video is from this fantastic book, um, Advanced Recorder Technique, Breathing and Sound by Gudrun Hayes. I think it's brilliant. It has so many examples, exercises and things to do. I would really recommend it. Largely my tips for getting a good sound on a soprano recorder are gonna be broken down into three sections. They are getting the right air speed, breath support, and tuning. Before we go on, my biggest tip is to enjoy the sound of your recorder. Yes, it's a very high instrument, the soprano, and the tendency when we come to play it is to shy away from it and to cringe a little bit from how high it is. But I would say if you're gonna be playing Enjoy it, stand there proudly, and just trust the good sound of your instrument. Okay, we're gonna start with the concept of fast and slow air speeds. This um, helps me to visualize what is happening when I'm breathing. Breathing and sound are a bit of a funny concept. You can't look inside your body and see what's happening. So we have to explain things with a bit of imagery. Um, so I hope this is helpful for you. I find it really helpful to, instead of thinking blowing hard and soft, I think about blowing fast and slow. And this is really easy to feel. If you take your hand, first we're gonna blow warm air onto it as if you're trying to mist up a window, okay? Now you can see I drop my jaw, I blow slowly. So that warm air is a slow air speed. Now we're going to blow cold air onto your hand. That is a fast air speed, simple as that. But what does this mean for the recorder? Large instruments, the bases, the ones with a really wide bore that you have to fill up. For those, it's helpful to blow with a slow air speed. For your smaller instruments, for example, the soprano, um, then we want a faster air speed. Let's hear a G with a fast air speed. And with a slow air speed. I want you to make your mind up about which one you prefer because that's actually what we're going to do now. We are going to get to know our instruments. The important thing with playing your recorder is that you get to know it inside out. You understand what differences you make physically and what effect 
that has on your instrument and your sound. Then you are in control of how you play it. An exercise for feeling that fast airspeed. I want you to go to the window and pick a point really far away in the distance. <laughs> Bear with me. And then you're gonna fill up your lungs and in one continuous breath, blow a fast airstream towards that point. Concentrate that it's one really steady stream. It doesn't wobble or get bigger or smaller. It just goes, whoosh. ready? Now to feel the slow air stream, I want you to imagine you have a small ball in your hands and you're gonna breathe out with a slow air stream. And as you do that, the ball is going to expand with this warm air. Ready? How does that feel with your recorder? For the fast airspeed, we are gonna take a D. It's gonna be quite high, that's nice. I want you to really get used to and enjoy the highness of your instrument. Okay, so we're gonna do the fast airspeed exercise again. Pick that same point in the distance and I want you to really listen to how your recorder is sounding. Actually, I want you to try and always play like this. With the recorder, when you're blowing out, um, try not to blow separately for each note. But in one continuous stream, so this can really help to think of in a line instead of bursts. Okay, that slow airspeed we're also going to try on the recorder. I want you to cover all of the holes of your instrument. Sit up straight, but look at a point in front of you and imagine that ball, that globe, expanding with warm air. As a general rule, the lower you play on the instrument, the slower the airspeed, the higher you play on the instrument, the faster the airspeed. For this reason, I want you to get to know three positions on your recorder. Everything closed, the low C, the middle G, and the high B. What you can do is do the fast airspeed and the slow airspeed exercise with each of these notes. I want you to really listen to yourself, feel how it is, and I want you to decide for yourself which one you find the most beautiful. You might have a different opinion than me, but it's about getting to know your instrument. to know your recorder. This brings me to the breathing section. The most important thing you can do for sound is making sure you are blowing enough air into your instrument. If the recorder was a car, air would be the petrol or gas. Um, if the recorder was a human body, air would be food or air. We also need that. If you don't blow enough, your recorder will sound a bit weak and sickly. If you blow too much, it's going to sound harsh and I think of it as metallic. So we're going to search for that optimum breath pressure for you, for your instrument and for your chosen sound. I'm pointing a lot today. With the soprano, because it's so high, people often don't want to blow a lot. They Maybe uh, maybe you feel exposed. If you're in an ensemble, maybe you feel like, oh, I don't want to stick out. But if you don't blow enough, then you'll always have a bit of a wobbly crap sound, to be honest. So let's just get away with all of that thinking. We are going to blow enough. 
The first thing we're going to do is get to know your recorder's limits. Where does it start to sound wobbly and sickly? Where does it start to overblow and sound harsh? And where is it that golden part in the middle where it just sounds lovely. We're going to do that with a G because this is a nice, stable, relatable note. And I want you to breathe like this. Really hitting the extremes. So don't try and sound nice. Go from one extreme to the other. you will have heard in the beginning there was no sound and then it was like uh, and then it over blew to a couple of overtones higher that's good we want to feel where those points are maybe you want to use those sounds one day don't just stick to one note try lots low notes high notes cross fingerings open fingerings okay now we're going to narrow the range a little bit i want you to do the same exercise blowing more or less also, uh, maybe you want to think of it blowing faster and slower, but pick a range in which you can hear that note clearly. If you listen again, at the lowest level of the note, it's going and it feels very thin. At the top, it seems to kind of bulge and have this metallic um, kind of edge to it. So listen for that. Now if we do this exercise again, I want you to stop at the point where you find it really beautiful and see if you can hold that. Feel free to play around this, push a little bit more drop it a little bit less just to check if that's really the one that you really like. Then when you have that, see if you can grab your instrument and hit that tone immediately. So again, try this on different notes. I recommend the low C, the D, and the high B. One thing that's really important with all recorders actually is breath support. This is making sure that your breath is being sent out in a controlled manner and not just a kind of floppy. As we've discussed before, the recorder has no resistance. You're literally blowing into a hole and unless you help it, that air is just going to be lost and then you can't do anything with your sound. I don't think I can teach you breath support in this short video but again the book from Gudrun has a lot of amazing exercises in it so if you really want to dive into that that is a book I really recommend. One common problem with the soprano recorder is what I like to call dead air. Do you ever have the feeling that when you're playing you're taking in enormous breaths but you're still running short of air all the time you're kind of feeling a bit as if you're suffocating. I have that, actually, sometimes. Another symptom of having dead air is also that you are letting air rush out through your nose. For example, if you notice that you're leaking air through your nose while you're playing, that's extremely inefficient, and let's try and get rid of that. I think what actually happens when you're feeling this dead air is that you breathe in and you completely fill up with air, but then you only breathe out again shallowly from here. So you're going This might not be biologically accurate, but this is how I think of it. So you're only breathing in and out in a shallow way and this isn't getting used at all. And that can make you quickly feel like you're suffocating. Two things. One, the soprano recorder doesn't actually need that much air. 
it's really small, especially if you're using a Baroque model. If you take in more than you need, you're gonna have an excess and then you have a bit of a headache trying to get rid of it, which is why your body then goes, the other thing is to really control the outward flow of air. And if you're interested in this, it can be really good to get into breath support techniques for breathing out. Some of these uh, can be found in my warm up video, breathing and sound. This is a good exercise to feel the area where you should ideally be sending your air to when you're breathing in. Put your hands on your hips upside down. We're sitting on a chair, feet flat on the ground with uh, your knees apart, and then we're just going to lean forward over your knees. And I want you to take a deep, long breath in. Now, because this whole part of your body is on your legs, you will feel down here expanding. Ready? you feel that? That's your flanks and your lower ribs and all of that part down there. So when you breathe in, try and open up this part down here. And then when you breathe out again, it's not just going to relax and go, but this can really help for the soprano to kind of um, get rid of any sounds like this. Other thing that is vital is tuning, intonation. So it basically means you're playing a B, but is that B a bit too high or a bit too low? And the thing is with high instruments, you hear the differences really quickly. playing on your own I want you to take some time to do some tuning exercises for yourself really listening to your instrument and feeling physically how that feels when you're playing in tune here's an exercise we're going to play an octave and then a fifth Keeping your breath supported at all times and thinking, does this airspeed need to be faster or slower to be in tune? If you're playing with other people, it's vital that you play in tune. Don't be shy to ask for a bit of extra time to tune at the start of the rehearsal. I find it most helpful not to tune to a unison, that's where you're playing the same note, but to tune to a fifth. For example, if someone plays a D, you play an A on top. That's five notes apart, which is a fifth. A fifth, I find, is much easier to hear if it's in tune or not than the same note. And take a tip from me. If you are worried you are out of tune, don't blow less because you don't want to be heard. You will just get even flatter. Keep your airstream really healthy and that will go a long way. And then if you have one tuning issue with a certain chord, that's fine, that's just a technical thing. Just stop and ask to sort it out together. No one will think any less of you as a player. And if you are the soprano player in an ensemble, try and practice playing through mistakes. Often you have the highest part, it might be the most noticeable, and train yourself that if you make a mistake, you don't get flustered. It's fine, literally, Everybody makes mistakes, myself included, and practice staying in the beat and continuing. So you fluff up one note, it's fine, just keep going. If you stop and go and get flustered, then people will notice. Just a little note about Baroque style instruments in relation to Renaissance style instruments. As you can see, they are different, the holes are slightly different, and the main thing is the width of the bore. As you can see, the Baroque bore is much thinner and the Renaissance bore is much wider. Even the Renaissance soprano um, needs a lot more air than the Baroque soprano. 
So this one needs to be approached in a much different way. It's still a fast airstream, but there's just a lot more air. So if you have both types of instrument, it's worth switching between the two to kind of experience that difference. So in summary, these are my tips and tricks for moving your elbows around a lot, for sounding good and getting a good sound on your soprano recorder. First, don't be afraid of the sound of your instrument. Yes, it's high, but that's also super beautiful. Two, give enough air for a healthy sound. Too little air and you will sound sickly. Know the limits of your instrument. Too much air and it's gonna sound harsh. So get used to how that golden part in the middle, how that feels physically for you. Experiment with fast and slow air speeds. That will be different for every size of recorder, for Renaissance and Baroque, and even for the different registers of your instrument. So again, get to know your instrument. Support your breathing, breathing out in one continuous stream, not breaking it up in bursts, and supporting with your air system that you don't have a wobbly, unintentional vibrato. And listen to your tuning. Try and play in tune so that even if you have a good sound, you don't ruin it by playing four hertz too high. That's all I have to say for now. There is undoubtedly much more on the matter. So if you have tips, tricks, hints, comments, experiences, anecdotes, questions, leave them all down here in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on the recorder. You can subscribe by clicking me. See you next week.